first off, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much for coming. Of course, dude. Of course. Um, I hope if you don't mind, we're gonna start with a sponsored ad here. Got it. If that's okay. Sure. Um, as long as it's nothing controversial. <laughs> uh, we 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 like to pick those. I'll, I'll, I'll let you pick and choose. We can always cut and edit out afterwards. Okay. So first, we want to say thank you so much for our sponsored ad, uh, Boner Pills. And if you want to try any, you're more than welcome to at any point in time. <laughs> Great. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Boner Pills would be a great name for a company. Right. So, um, have you watched the podcast before? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. How many episodes? Two. What, what was, which, which episode? You look much different in person. <laughs> I, th- I think, uh, I think that's our cue, Jason. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I think we actually got him for a second. You got to wait for earlier than that. We tried to bring the greatest pressure of all time. Yeah, good to see you, buddy. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash allgoodthings. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash allgoodthings. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash allgoodthings. And it's also sponsored by Blue Chew. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code goodthings and you're going to pay just $5 in shipping. So head to bluechew.com, promo code Good things, that's one word, and you're going to get your first month free. And it's also brought to you by NetSuite. Head to netsuite.com slash Nash for a -a one-of-a-kind financing program. That's netsuite.com slash Nash. Again, that's netsuite.com slash Nash. (laughs) Nice to meet you. Right, good to see you. Good to see you. I was like, the camera does not do you justice, my friend. (laughs) Guys, what's up? We're here. All Good Things Podcast. Joe Gatto from... Impractical That's Jokers cool. is here. I, I will say that's not the worst attempt I've ever had. Tell me. I did a radio interview. I did, no, I did a, a, an interview, and they had a guy. <laughs> so I walk into this little room, and the guy has a camera. There's just a camera out, just there, like in the green room. And this other guy's like, has a camera around his throat. And he's like, hey, man. He's like, hey, oh, so happy. He's like, I'm going on before you. I'm like, oh, it's like a, it was like a national, like a, a, you know, like a, we were playing in a town or whatever, and I was going to do the press. And he goes, yeah, we're playing. He's like, you know, I'm super nervous. I'm a magician. I'm like, oh, okay, man, you'll be all right. Don't worry about it, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's like, oh, he's like, I'm just going to go use the bathroom. And then they start playing fart sounds out of the bathroom. <laughs> and then he comes out and he's like, hey, dude, he's like, can I borrow your underwear? He's like, my underwear. And I was like, Absolutely, dude. I was like, absolutely, I'll give you my underwear. And he's like, oh, really? You'll give me my underwear? I'm like, I was like, do you think I think any of this is real or like what is going on? And he goes, oh, no, it's real, dude. He's like, there's, look, there's a newspaper. And he's like, there's an article about me in it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I look, and it looks like they like taped like over the newspaper, like just newspaper print. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is a real newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brett said boner pills. You boner didn't even give a brand. Pills. I froze. <laughs> <laughs> you had fear in your boner eyes pills. from the handshake. You had fear in your eyes, but I appreciate the effort, buddy. Good. It's good to see you. <laughs> you. You prank the best. You could only go up from here is really would be my takeaway. Hey, listen, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I Bye, Brett. Thank you. you. See you next time. Take care, bro. Check out his uh, thirst traps on Instagram. They're great. Uh, phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. I saw them in real life. Love them. Uh, so, guys, yes, we're here with Joe Gatto from Impractical Jokers. You are a legend you, in sir. the basic cable space. Dude, you really can't touch me in the basic cable space. <laughs> you can. You Channel can. one million. I mean, I'm how there. many? I mean, when I told all my friends, most of my friends are younger because I do YouTube. Yeah. When I, okay, so for instance, I have Dane Cook on the show as okay. well. No, everybody knows you. <laughs> it's crazy, and, that, and that's insane. Yeah. I mean, like the younger generation, they, all these guys grew up with you. Yeah. Uh, my kids watched the show. I mean, over COVID, we just watched it and watched it. How many seasons? 11 seasons? Yeah, so uh, I did nine. They're going into their 10th. I did nine and a half. Great. And over 300 episodes, and it's so funny because I always said when we met people, like literally the meet and greets after the show, like when you meet people, they come back, and I, one thing that always stood with me is I met a grandmother a mother and a daughter. The three of them watched the show. Yeah. The three of them each had their own favorites. They all had their favorite moments. And it was crazy just to see, like, because I grew up, like, watching TV with my parents, right? Me and my father used to watch Tim Allen, right? We used to love uh, Home Improvement. That would be our show that we'd watch. And yep. laughing around the TV Saturday Night Live. I remember the first time I was la- allowed to stay up late enough to watch SNL with my pa- fam. Yeah. You know, so it was like that kind of thing just to be that for somebody else is just awesome. It's unbelievable. It's unreal. And, yeah. and what I love about the show is that through the years, it never got stale. You would always change it, you know? Like, I, 
one of the things that I really loved is when you would uh, when you drop the earpiece part and it was just the four of you in a room, yeah, just trying to make each other laugh. Yeah. I mean, like always looking ahead. It's it's so tough. Yeah, How it's many... fun because everybody always says like, oh, it's a show they put the earpiece in or whatever. Yeah. And that was literally just a third of our show. Yes, like we always came up with these games and social construct things to push against it. Then we came up with that bit of trying to make each other laugh. Yeah, so and that good. was like that was so fun. Yeah, and it was just a new format bust, you know. And we just always wanted to make it like just keep on like pushing ways to just make each other laugh because that's what the show was about, right? It's I, I think it's that. I think it's cool too that on such a high level, you guys aren't telling each other what you're gonna do, mm -mm. right? Yeah. And that's like the key to it. So much sneak, so much fun to yeah. just mess with people. My favorite punishment that I get asked all the time, like one of my favorite thing that I was able to do was, and it was, we did this one punishment where we just mind fuck Sal to think if it was a punishment or not. Because yeah. Sal is, I love, he's the perfect mix of like neurotic and gullible. It just works for me. And I, yeah. <laughs> I love, he's like, you know when you know your best friends. I know him 30 years. And I was like, I came up with an idea. I was like, what if we just keep messing with Sal that if he doesn't know what's going on, it's going to drive him batshit crazy. Uh -huh. And we'll just punish him that way. Yeah. And I got pushed back from everybody. I'm like, guys, just trust me. I know it's going to work. I know it's going to work. I know Sal. We got it. We got it through with the with the network. We got it through with Q. Q was like, are you sure this is going to work? I'm like, it's, buddy, it's going to work. Trust me. He's like, all right, I got you. So we did it. And we he just never knew if it was going to be a punishment or not. Right. Like we had like a fake crew come out. Like he was, it was his turn in Union Square Park and just this, you know, playground. We always used to mess around with people. It was just this cross through. We would always stop people, yeah. and we just made a crew come out and like lay cement. But they were our people, and they were pretending to like redo cement. Yeah. And we're like, oh, I was like, Sal, it's your punishment, dude. You got to put your. He's a big sneakerhead. I'm like, you got to dip your new sneakers in that punishment. And he's like, no. And he's like, this can't be real. I'm like, no, it's not. We're messing with you. And he just went on this roller coaster of emotion. By the end, his mind, you saw in his face, it's like mind was exploding. <laughs> like, how the hell? That's crazy. What is going on here? Yeah, yeah, ran yeah. himself to a tizzy. And things like that were always my favorite. Where did you meet all the guys? High school. 14 years old, in freshman year, high school, Staten Island. All boy Catholic high school, Monsignor Farrell. And we met freshman year. And it was just like, you know, we just became our boys there. And. We started doing improv comedy there together. And, when did you start doing improv? Uh, I started doing a junior year of high school. I didn't like come out of my shell to junior year of high school, really. Yeah, yeah. I was a super geek, math team, bowling team. So you're in Staten Island and you're putting on shows? Yeah, we did it in, well, we did those high school shows. Then we went our separate ways, different colleges. Yeah. And when we came back, um, they started, we started, hey, you want to start doing improv together? And we started putting up shows in a 50-person black box theater yeah. in, in Manhattan. And we just started doing it. And then you won a competition. Won a competition, yeah. Yeah, you hit the Wikipedia page. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you won $100,000. from. We won. Well, first of all, you're posting on, like, MySpace, MetaCafe. Huge. I, um, the thing that made me laugh was it said you, you, you posted on MetaCafe. Yes, yes, we <laughs> Which huge. I remember that. Is, I don't even know if it's probably still around. It might be, in a version. Yeah. But we did, we were big on MySpace and YouTube because, we got fans, people who picked the comedian page, just liked our stuff yeah. as the Tenderloins comedy troupe, which was our comedy troupe we formed. Yeah. And we just got featured a lot. And then there was this, uh, the name of the, the contest was... Um, <sighs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget the name it's of NBC. it. NBC. It was NBC's. It was run by Carson Daly. And, well, they had a pilot, and it was, uh, it was basically, they were trying to make the leap of how do you take internet people yeah. and put them, monetize them on television. So like we, we were, they were in this contest and it was basically a bunch of sketch groups and it was like, okay, could you win this contest? And all we did was like hit our mailing list up and they gave you a theme every month, every week of a thousand bucks you would win. And it was like, all right, how do you, could you do this? And we give you a theme of like a spy film or whatever it was and we would just go ahead and release, write, film the sketch send it out on, put it up on YouTube, have all our friends vote for it. Right. And then we just kept on generating all these hits. And then eventually they said, um, they were like, hey, how could you, let's do, pick three crews and you were in the pilot and you're competing for $100,000. And Carson Daly was the host. It was basically America's Funniest Videos for comedy shows. What was the sketch that won? So the sketch was one was called Time Thugs, where we went back in time and beat up the two kids that were bullies for us, but they were young kids. They were my nephews. Right. They were like an eight-year-old and six-year-old, and Q and Sal go back in time and beat up these right. young kids and teach them not to be bullies. And we come back, and I ended up being basically an Elon Musk. I invented this whole, like, I invented a whole um, tech company, and I made millions of dollars because they went back in time and beat up these bullies and made me cool. Uh, so that was, that was it. And we, the pilot, we won the pilot, but the pilot didn't air. So it was a failed NBC pilot, but they contractually had to pay us. Right. So they paid us $100,000 to not be aired. And the best thing that came out of that was that we got our agent and we got a production company that was like, these guys are funny. They deserve their own show. 
Right. And it started us down this path of creating our own television show. Had a bunch of failed, you know how TV is, had a bunch of failed pilots that were like, didn't go anywhere. And then we came up with the idea for Impractical Jokers as our last hit. What was YouTube like in the early days? Uh, it was really fun because the space was, <laughs> it's funny because our YouTube channel has gone now. I what? have my own YouTube channel. What? Like, we never kept up with it. You know, oh, we, okay. we, we made the jump to TV. Right. We never really kept up to it. It was a bunch of bad sketches yeah. that were on there. And we were like, oh, you know, I think so. I think it might be still there with maybe one or two. But I have my channel. Yes, you know, I've and I've it. done that. And you have I've, your podcast with Steve Byrne. I have podcast with Steve Byrne. Yeah, he's cool so funny. the best. Burns the best, man. He's, I've seen him many times. He's so great. Yeah, we toured together, too. He's actually, we're performing this weekend. I'm doing my LA Where are you run going? here. I'm in... I'm doing San Diego. I leave from here to go to San Diego, do the Grove Theater, and then I'm up, uh, I'm sorry, in San Diego, I'm the Balboa. Then I come up here to do the Grove Theater in Anaheim. Great. Then I'm over to San Jose, and I'm at the Center for Performing Arts, and then I'm over in... Uh, you like doing stand-up? I love it. Yeah. I love it, man. I like it better than I thought, because like, so when I was like, all right, now how am I putting food on the table? What am I doing? I always love to make people laugh, and I was like, let me try stand-up, because I've always performed live. Yeah. And I was like, let me try this format, and I really am enjoying it, man. It really is just so fun to get up there and. Because I have people that come along for Jokers, right? I tell them a little bit yeah. about the stories are from that and stuff. Yeah. That's how people know me. And then I get in a little bit to more about me as, you know, like being a dad now and, you know, basically my crazy mom growing up and things like that. And just telling stories about me so they get to know me a little bit more. I did stand up in, in, um, in 2019, right before COVID. I did like yep. 33 shows and it was the same for me. I gave them a little bit. They know it from YouTube. YouTube right? I give them some stories from YouTube and then, you know, some stuff about my kids or whatever. But it's, uh, right. I want to get back to it. it it's, it's such a, are you nervous before you go up? It's different because I actually was more nervous in the comedy clubs because I'm used to a theater space, right? When I right. toured with the guys for eight years, we just did, you know, these theater shows. Right, because in the theater show, they know you and they're ready for you. Right, and it's, I'm job. used to a bigger space, right? Like yes. I did, like, you know, I was doing like MS, you know, I did, did MSG and I did like, you know, the, you know, O2 over in London and it was like these big things and then I came out and I started doing like these smaller comedy clubs and it's so intimate, the people are right there and I love that too, I'm not afraid of that, I'm an improv guy, I love to mix it up. Yeah. But it was just like when I got back to a theater space, you know, we had enough people, enough fans came out and gave support. And it was like, all right, you could get into theaters again. And I jumped on that theater stage. I was like, oh, OK. Now I'm, I'm a big physical comedian, so I like the space. I love to yeah. I pace. I'm like a panther. You know, I'm back and forth the whole time. So it felt a little bit more comfortable to me to do that. But I just love stand up. I really I was like, I don't know if I was going to be good at it. I didn't know because I was used to split it up. Right. There was four of us on stage. Yeah. You had to be responsible for 25 percent of the funny. It's like, OK, just make them laugh for that long. And then if somebody else, you know, you're up there with your friends, a safety net. If somebody says a joke, that's not funny. They got your back. We'll make it funny. So I wasn't afraid of like, like, like bombing, you know, or saying a joke that was bad until I was by myself. I was like, oh, the whole 60 minutes, 75 minutes is on me. Yeah. So it was a little bit. That was a change for me. 2000, 2008, 2022. When it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. Dot com crash, the housing crash, the roller coaster that we're going through right now. One thing is certain. It is dangerous to not know your numbers. But over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Guys, as you know, I run a business here at the All Good Things podcast, and I have employees. Uh, I'm doing it all, and I love NetSuite because it keeps everything organized. It keeps all my financials in one place, and it has an amazing interface uh, that's very simple to use for a dumb guy like me. NetSuite gives you the visibility and control over your financials. HR, planning, budgeting, inventory, so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need all in one place. Guys, times are uncertain, but the best way to plan for it is with NetSuite. NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your business processes, and easily see where to save money. That's why 93% of the customers say they've improved their visibility and control when they upgraded to NetSuite. And right now, NetSuite is offering a special one-of-a-kind financing program. Just head to netsuite.com slash Nash. That's netsuite.com slash Nash and get started today. And my thanks to NetSuite for sponsoring this podcast. It's when you DM me, I was just like, what? <laughs> I was just like, I, I turned to Jess and Ferris. I was like, "Yo, oh, Joe Gatto just DM me and said that he liked the podcast." We were like, we we're like flipping out. Yeah. And and so I like, I can't believe you're here. This is like no, this is great, man. Really fucking cool. I've I've watched you a lot on um, podcasts. I watched on Theo's podcast. I'm with Theo, yeah. And one of the stories that you told on there, which I just loved, I just loved hearing about how you work at Nordstrom. Oh man, Nordstrom, right down the road, baby. And this is this is so cool. Like, I think this is like a big part of your success. Like, you're very funny. But you, you're like, you have like a way of 
connecting with anybody. Yeah. And I, and I just think that that's like if it's so key in comedy to be able to sure. to to be able to just connect with anybody to do things that you're like everyone's going to find that most people are going to find this funny. And I I'm just in awe of it. And I think so much of that has to do with that story you told from Nordstrom. Yeah. Like first of all, you go into Nordstrom and like I've always been into clothes, yeah. you know, and sure, I, clearly, yeah. check out the fashion here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Tipsy elves, <laughs> used by code Jason, um, and 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 you know, Nordstrom's just such an odd. And so, he, when you go into Nordstrom, you someone immediately comes up to you mm-hmm. and starts talking. All commission, baby. They're and all usually, them. it's a really pretty girl, <laughs> right? In the right departments. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the, and the pretty girl will start. This would look good on you, right, and oh right. my god, you're like, yeah. and you know that. But you forget. It's almost like if you're in a strip. It's almost like a strip club. Uh, almost. Almost. Nordstrom is a strip club of department stores. I've always said it. I've always- <laughs> Nordstrom plays it a little harder than Bloomingdale's? Well, they do, for sure, because it's 100% commission-based. You walk in that spot. If you're not buying something, I'm not eating, baby. I need you to buy that shirt. Oh, you, you don't get a salary at Nordstrom? Commission. Well, I don't know if it's still the way here, but when I was back in my day, when I was there. You oh, worked at the Grove. Oh, three to 05. I rocked out the, the Grove. I was in the rail department. And rail. Yeah, I did the rail. What is rail? Nordstrom the rail. rail. Is like their seven That's jeans, their page. Not their, rack. Uh, not rack. Not rail. Rack. rack is where the stuff it didn't sell. <laughs> let me let me give you a little bit of education about the, the Nordstrom's and the way it was. So, my mother my mother uh, worked in makeup growing up in oh, Boston. Great. So she had a job and she would drag me to every store. And so I grew up in malls. I would hang out in Nordstrom. So this is like my world. So go. For sure. Go. For sure. So Nordstrom's had this small departments if you go to it now they had a little department called the rail and the rail basically sold like men's jeans t-shirts things like that and it was a small little area but yeah. then your boy joe starts at the rail at the grove and i come in like a tasmanian devil i'm selling shit i am th- stuck they can't keep it in stock i'm on fire i'm a new york salesman here rocking it out telling people that they look like shit <laughs> and stuff like i was i was for true like i wasn't a salesman but like somebody put something on, i'm like no take that off and I would sell them the less jeans because I, and truth always was the way for me. It was like, no, that doesn't look good on you. But this will. Try this. There you go. That looks better. You know, you want, what do you want to do here? You want to spend a little bit more and look better? Fine. But you know what? Lose the shirt. You don't need both. Pick one or the other. And I would do that to people legitimately because yeah. I was always, I'm a New York, I'm a salesman by blood. I was always my thing. Like I just Your always loved it. My dad was a salesman. Yeah, he, he did sell. insurance sales. Okay. And I started in, I got my accounting degree. And I was like, I have way too much personality for accounting. I'm never going to do this. So I started consulting. So I've had so many jobs, like so many careers. Like if I had five or six careers at this point in my life, it started with consulting. Then I went into sales. And then I went into the baby industry. I went into like selling high-end furniture and baby gear for this company as a personal shopper. And it was just all over the map. But when I was at Nordstrom, I was always just shoot people straight. I would just be like, this is not, this is not for you. This or this is for you. you know? And I really got to like really enjoy selling men's fashion. I really did like it. And so when I would walk around that place, the, the loophole was you could sell anything in the store. So you normally had to stick to your place. Mm-hmm. So I started myself up a web. I started up myself up. I, I, I started making friends with people. I was like, listen, here, I'm going to bring the girlfriend to you. Don't let me down. You sell whatever you get there. Give me 50%. I'll give me one pair of jeans, whatever they sell. So they would throw me the little bit of bone there. I would do the same with boyfriends. And I would just sell them anything. And it just ended up being this whole thing. And we sold the rail so hard. I ended up being, they called it a platinum pace setter. <laughs> which you basically sold, means you sold, I was the number six in the company of people in the rail department, and I sold a million dollars worth of goods in a year. So I was a platinum pace setter. And then literally, if you walk into the rail at Nordstrom's today, the rail department, they took over everything. They had to make more room. They took out men's sportwear. It all became crazy because we were really? doing so much volume in two you're years. part of that. Huge. And what's your mindset there when you're, you're, you're crushing it at Nordstrom yep. and comedy's not happening yet? Because I think that's a big thing that I struggle with is like, yeah. I'm, I'm doing something, I'm making money at it, but it's not exactly what I want to be doing. For sure. Um, how do you, how'd you deal with that? That's the number one question we get on our podcast. I mean, we and Steve really? do this thing, Two Cool Moms, right? So it's our podcast where we spend the first half talking about our mothers, and the second half of it is taking advice from people. And every question that comes in is like, how did you know to make the leap and whatnot? And the thing was, I didn't. Right? I was doing the side hustle for years. Right. I was doing just comedy. I, out here, I wasn't even trying to do comedy. Out here, I was chasing a dream to be a director and screenwriter. Uh-huh. That is my, that's my, when I grow up, I want to be a movie director. Like that was always my thing. Yeah. The, the show was kind of a, how are you chasing that? that? So out here, I was just doing short film with people. Yep. I was making a bunch of short films. I was, uh, volunteering at like, uh, uh, festivals. Yep. I was trying to do that kind of stuff on the side and I was writing with people. Did like, you have, uh, ever have a brush with anyone famous before you made it? Sure. 
Who? Plenty. I sold Eddie. pants to Vince Vaughn. Uh, <laughs> no, was, you didn't. I did. I, I snuck in through past security and gave George Clooney my business card here at a, I, I, at the uh, the old, um, what was that theater that we used to be here? The big, uh, they closed it now. We lost it because of COVID, but it was awesome. It was a, the land, it was a landmark theater. The Lemley? Uh, no, it was like the... Right here on Sunset. In the roundabout, yeah, on Sunset. What was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called the Lemley, wasn't it? The, uh, yes, the line... The, Sunset 5? Yes, right there, right? So... They did a Q&A for Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, yeah. and he was doing a talk, whatever, and I was watching the space, and I saw that the emergency exit was on the left-hand side, and I knew that that's where he was going to go out, right? So everybody, like, was looking on this side, and I was like, you know what? No. I did a shuffle. I <laughs> snuck past security. I walked by, and here comes George Clooney walking right at me, and I go, Mr. Clooney, let me tell you something. I'm a huge fan of your work and what you do. I'm going to be a big-time director sometime, but I know I need to start somewhere. Here's my card. I'd love to even get you coffees. Wow. And he said, thanks, what's your name? I said, Joe Gatto. And I gave him my business card, and it was said Ampere Productions. It was my production company. <laughs> I was like, here's my production company. I was like, I'd love to buy it. Never heard from him, but <laughs> I, I, would, you know, I took my shot. So like, I was always just trying to hustle out here. Just, you, you, didn't, know, you didn't convince him to come down to the rail. No. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't come down to the rail. But I, would, I met so many people you know, at, at Nordstrom. It's, I still, one of my favorite things that I have is from Brittany Murphy, I have a yeah. comment card that she gave me praise, and I decided to keep it instead of hand it in. I was like, this is too important to me, instead of trying okay, to get so it. Okay, you, so you're, Brittany, you sold some clothes to Brittany Murphy, Brittany, whoever she, she, she took, the took the time to, to write a comment, comment card? card? yeah. Incredible. Because I told her to, I asked her to. Oh, you did? <laughs> she's, like, she's like, oh, this was so great. I was like, look, if you, while you're waiting, while I'm ringing things up, if you want to, I slid the comment card right over with a pen, click, clicked. Help me out. Yeah, I what did it say? It said, uh, Joe was great and made my experience unbelievable, something like that. I still have it. I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. It was, uh, I mean, was this great. is so, for anybody watching, like, for if that's the question I get too, like, just have a good attitude, 100%. just fucking hustle, and, and whatever you're doing, like, do that job well. Yeah. You know, it's just so key. I think people, especially now, respond to just being a kind human, just being like a real person or whatever. Yeah. You know, especially in this town, because I always felt, I came from New York. Where, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Boston. Okay, so you're yeah. East Coaster. East Coast. First thing when I moved out here, it was like the second question out of people's mouth. was like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't even want to talk to these people anymore. Whenever people ask me, what do you do? Or whatever. It's like, what do you, they're angling. So right. all my best friends, I made mean, three or four of my best friends live in here. One of my guys was from Connecticut, an East yeah. Coaster from Connecticut. And just good people that I, you know, we just always got in a good conversation and you could, you know, really just tell that they were just interested in finding a connection of just like hanging out with somebody yeah. and being a friend. It wasn't an angle. I felt out here was a lot of angles. So if you're looking for an angle and I feel like it always comes across that way, uh -huh. I, I think you just need to just interact with humans. Uh -huh. I said, I told these young kids too, because I, I interact with a lot of, you know, influencers and content creators and whatnot. And it's always like... They're looking at the numbers and what, what could you do for me and stuff. That that stuff is not the way to live. It's not a way to approach no, somebody. No. no, not at all. No, be a fan of like what people do and just and you know yes. make a connection. You know. Yeah. I don't is, even... there, is there something funny about Staten Island? Because yeah, sure. I have I have a friend from Staten Island who's really funny. Like, and uh, Pete Davidson is from Staten sure. Island, yeah. and you're from Staten Island. Yeah, you, all your boys are from Staten Island too. Yeah. What's going on in Staten Island? <laughs> I don't know. Something <laughs> in the water, I guess. I think Staten Island always just had a. Uh, a thing about like the underdog mentality there. Yeah. It was always the fifth borough that people forgot. You know, it's not Brooklyn, it's not Manhattan, you know, it's yeah. not the Bronx with the Yankees, you know, it's it's Staten Island. It's where they kept the garbage for many years. <laughs> and for us, I think it was always it always had sense of community for me out of all the boroughs. Because yeah. like Brooklyn you get that, right? People's mom watch it from the window. Johnny, I'll tell your mother, like you'll get that attitude. But in Staten Island, it was a real sense of community where you had neighborhoods. You rode your bike, you played in people's backyards. You did things like that where I think that made a bond of people to be like, how can we help each other? Or how can we, you know, you know, yeah. you have stories. Yeah. Right? A lot of my stories are from growing up. My stories are crazy. I used to run around my neighborhood dressed as a ninja at night. 10 years old, you know, 14 years old, I'm dressed in a, as a what ninja. What kind of kid were you? Were you a I theater was, kid? No, I was a weird. I was a weird fucking kid. Just weird. Were you into comedy? I was not. I was just like, I was into like math. And meth? like Legos. Oh, math. And like <laughs> meth. I was into meth. I was heavy I mean, into Staten meth. Staten Island, you never know. <laughs> so much meth. I did. <laughs> um, no, I was like kind of just like weird. I was into like fantasy adventure stuff. I wrote, I did creative D &D. writing. Doesn't I didn't even do D&D. &D. I wasn't even cool enough for D&D. &D. No. No, I made up my own stories. I used I think to. you were cool enough for D&D. &D. <laughs> There's nobody that's not cool enough It was enough like for I didn't have enough friends to play D&D. &D. You didn't have friends. No friends. I had nobody. I was, I was, I was like a loner that just didn't really like get my comedy yet. Until the junior year of high school is really where I just started making people laugh. And I was like, oh, this is fun. I could do this. 
I would say you you were the impetus for the four. Is that correct? It's hard to say. Is that fair to say that? No, I think it, when the show when the show when you would watch the show, I remember when it came out, I was like, he's the he's sort of the leader. Well, the, there's a difference, and that's I, okay because every group has every a leader. group has a leader, of course. And I wouldn't say I wouldn't necessarily call myself the leader, but I would say that I gave my I gave us all. I would always be the weirdest or I'd always be the most out there or the most didn't give a shit. The, mm. the guys, I would give them permission to act that way. Oh, I so I that. think that's what people would see that. But as much as that, I would follow the lead of the other guys. Sure. You know, with different things. You know, sure. it depends on what we're doing. But with, in that show, to be weird, nobody's weirder than me. Right. Nobody was more f- out there than me. No. Out of the four. I mean, they have their moments for sure. But like, I, I'd always be like, fuck it. Let's do it, guys. And it would be like that kind of mentality. And I think that's why people, you would say that. That's really beautiful, you know, you know that, to, to, um, to crucify yourself. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I don't care. Yeah. If Joe doesn't care, then what we can go care? there yeah. as well. I, d- I felt that a little bit when, when we do our YouTube videos with, um, with David Dobrik mm-hmm. and Jonah and everybody. Sure. It, I, I felt like that, too. Like, um, if, if I probably would fail the most at everything. You know, I would say, I would say to them... <laughs> I would say, turn the camera on. I got something. Yeah. And that was always bad. It would never, ever. <laughs> and, and David would go, David would go, whenever you do this, it doesn't work. Right. And, and of course. It, but, then it, the cam- but then the camera would be on, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. And then you get your content, right? <laughs> so I guess you're welcome, really, David, is what we're saying. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think somebody's got to be that guy to do that. But in the same breath, I could say, you know, if I would look, the guys would give me the permission to be crazy because like, they would smirk or smile, and I'd like, oh, we're on to something here. Yeah. And that would just make us go to 10, you know? So I think it's all, it really is just a, it really is just a, like, uh, environment of support, which what, I was. What, really... what were the, for the other three guys, go to each one and tell me what, like, their laugh triggers are. Like, how would you get them to laugh? Oh, I mean, Sal was the easiest. For, I mean, I, I make Sal crumble at any time. Lie, anything would have look. I could just make the guy go forever. <laughs> Q gets him back. Q, it took a while for him to really get my sense of humor, I think, too, because he'd be like, this guy is just being loud. And, like, what's he doing? And then we realized, oh. He's not doing it for anybody but himself. <laughs> like, that, that's when he got on board. He was like, oh, shit. He's like, this guy's fun, you know, with that. Right. And then with Murr, Murr's a little bit more, like, of an inter- intellectual. But, like, me, her, him and I connect, like, we both love the old school, like, uh, Mel Brooks movies and airplanes and, and things like that. Like, goofy the slapstick shit, comedy, slapstick. like, goofy. Right, so with him, him and I, like, we balanced it a different way where I'd be like, he just appreciated the goofiness, uh-huh. I think, so... It, it, it's all the same, but at the end of the day, we all just, it was friends making each other laugh. That's yeah. what it is. That's what that show is. It's a show about friendship more than anything. Yeah. It's four friends making each other laugh. We don't care if you're laughing honestly. Like, I didn't, like, we weren't like, we weren't like, oh, this will make them laugh. It was like, oh, did you got it? Okay, great. They laughed, you know? It's built right in there, it isn't is. it? You the don't, need, the, right you don't there, need an yeah. audience. Mm-hmm. If they're laughing, then they're going to be laughing. Even with our improv back in the day, our shows, we were just having a good time. You can't help have a good time if you're watching people have a good time. I believe that to my core. If you're watching people have a good time, you're going to have a good time. Yeah. So if you're enjoying what you're doing genuinely, no matter what it is you're doing out there, people are going to come show up. Yeah. So I think that was part of it for me. And we just carried that on to the TV show. Wow. And do you still want to direct? 100%. Yeah. yeah, I just got to direct my first comedy special with Steve Byrne. I, I directed you directed his special. I did. I did his latest one, which is great. The last late night would see. It was I mean, awesome. how many cameras you do? It was for awesome. That one was like eight. That. That was eight. Eight yeah, cameras. Which is good. It was so funny because when we did the back, you know, they have all the split screen up, and I'm sitting with the tech director, and he's like, okay, you just tell me what camera you want to pull up, and then we'll look at it big as we're doing it. I'm like, okay, great. And I'm sitting there at the same time watching the nine cameras, and he was like, do you want me to pull anything? And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, this is my life. I was like, I multicam for 10 years. Yeah. My mind watches 10 cameras at once. I'm just like, oh, I'm like, I'm looking it all over. I didn't need him to switch. And he was like, Oh, he's like, that's weird. He's like, because people normally want it big. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, I, I'm just, my eyeballs are bouncing all over the screen because in the back of the BTS of the TV show, we had 20 cameras, you know, 10 to 20 cameras on a shoot. So yeah. I was always watching a multicam split. So for, my mind just works that way now. Yes. You know? So it was really, really interesting. To, You've been to trained for it. Trained for it, yeah. So it was pretty cool. That's incredible. The cam thing. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, I've been writing a lot too. I got some scripts that I'm, you know, been working on. I'm uh-huh. really excited about. So. I've had time to do that stuff now, right? Like my mind was always just jokers and do yeah. that. But now I've opened this floodgate of availability of time. Is there a point when you're doing a show that's really successful and incredibly successful that you go, um, I, I, I'm done? Like Larry David. <laughs> Larry David this famously right. walked away from Seinfeld, right? Yeah. Which is insane. Insane. 
Yeah. Uh, but he just couldn't do it anymore. Right. Did you ever get like that? I don't know if I ever felt that way, you know, like, you know, life happened, you know, things happened in my personal life that made me have to step away from jokers. And do I think I'd still be doing it? I don't, I think I probably, you know, would be, we always said we'll stop doing it when we stop having fun. Yeah. You know, and I always still showed up and had fun mm-hmm. and whatnot, but now being on the other side of it and not just being a hundred percent laser focused on that. I guess I do see the opportunity cost of just doing the one thing Yeah, where it was like, Oh, there's always these so many other ideas that I could feel like I could entertain the world or do stuff and sure. And thing like that. So I think that's a little bit of an eye opener for me for sure. Do you watch the episodes you're not in? No, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I, I it, it's hard. It's, it, it must it's be too hard. Yeah. To see yeah, that. I would um, think so too. You know, it's, it's, you know, I don't know if they would either, you know, and people, I, I hear from people all saying, oh, the show's not the same because you're not in it. Of course it's not. It's yeah. a different show. The show was the four of us, right? It wouldn't be the same event. You pulled one of us out. Yep. You know, so it's a different show now and, you know, people, you know, like it for different reasons and whatnot. So, but for me, it's a little too much of like salt on the wound. Like, uh, Who is your favorite uh, guest star that you had on? Uh, that's hard to say because, you know, we, we had a lot of fun. My favorite thing, we did that show. I don't know if you know, we did a show dinner party during COVID. Yes. Where it was like a, um, it was a, basically we wanted to continue to con- entertain people, but we couldn't do jokers. Yeah. And we're like, guys, what could we do? And we came up with this format called Dinner Party, where the four of us had dinner over Zoom, basically. Yeah. And we just made, basically had dinner, talked, you put told on? stories and stuff. It was on there. They did, it was on they True did TV. Season, on True. It was great. Amazing. People loved it. It was our favorite thing that we collectively, I think, that we've done. They didn't renew it because we were able to get back out there and do yeah. jokers. Cheap which for I think them. Is, it low cost so low cost <laughs> it was such a mistake honestly they should have renewed it i mean it was phenomenal um well maybe but, maybe it worked because of the time may work because of the time because people are like oh cool this yeah, is what this i'm doing will, i'm on Zoom. i know so i think mean, there's a relation the to it yeah but jeff daniels i've befriended through that like we've befriended him we had him on the show incredible talent and <laughs> He's unbelievable, and we, of course, we dumbed him down so much, and he was so onto it. It was, you know, it, the bit we called, it was called, Who Farted with Jeff Daniels? So we yeah. did this bit where we booked Jeff Daniels to do a photo shoot for a high-end thing. We played photographer's assistants, and when Jeff Daniels walked in, we had to pretend that we had just farted and make the person that was helping us take the blame for it. And that was the dumbest bit that we did. And we asked Jeff, Jeff, do us a favor. We know it's so dumb, but we think you'll crush it because we want you to go over the top and be indignant about to find out to get to the bottom of this. And he nailed it. He was unbelievable in it. And the way that it came about was we were laughing about this joke, the four of us. And I was like, guys, we should just ask him to do it. We had met him when he was doing To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway. We went to see it. We got his info. We hung out, whatever. And I said, guys, we should ask him to do it. Back and forth, we were all talking about, we should do it. Oh, how are we going to ask him to do it? I said, I didn't even tell the guys. I sent him an email. I said, Jeff, we have an idea for it. It's called Who Fought It with Jeff Daniels. We think it would be really funny. I sent him the email. They didn't even know. He replies to me, I'm in, right? So I tell the guys, I'm like, guys, Jeff Daniels wants to do the show. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I told him about the who farted thing. They're like, what? What are you doing? Why? I'm like, well, he said he loved it. He's going to do it. And they're like, what? they're like, you pitched who farted to Jeff Daniels? They're like, Academy they're like, Award winner <laughs> Jeff Daniels? They're like, you moron. It's, it's a great idea. I'm glad that you did it. But what if he didn't go for it? I'm like, well, he did go for it. So yeah, like, what, yeah. do you, what do you guys, we're all just sitting here spinning our wheels. I just ask him. And he ended up doing it. It was so great. It was so fun. And I have to say, that was probably my favorite to work with him. He's phenomenal. I love him. He's really good. We still keep in touch. He's great. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Is, is, uh, were there were there pranks that you did that you couldn't get a signature? For hundred, oh, so many, so many. It, 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 That's got to be the worst. The worst, because you spend so much time and effort. But the worst part is then the next turn that you go is not that turn. So mentally, as an entertainer and as a comedian, you're yeah. like shit. It's not that one. Yes. You know, but the, we never realized how many people cheat on their spouses in IKEA. <laughs> we filmed in IKEA. And we got so many. I think I heard about. We got this. so many signatures. People are like, "I would love to sign, but this is not my wife. This is my mistress. I'm buying discount furniture for." Like, hundred percent. Like, I did one of my favorite bits I think I've ever done in my life. They'll never see the light of day. I got a guy to hide in a full armor with me, and we had a whisper fight in it, and it was phenomenal. And he was like, "Dude, it was so funny. I love it." He's like, "I love to." He's like, "But I'm married. This is not my wife. I can't." So he wouldn't sign, and we couldn't use him. Wow. Yeah. So that's. Fine. I would say stay. We take your. Mr. to Ikea, I guess, is the message out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't get on camera. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, so you're a dad now? Yeah, two How kids. How old are your kids? Seven and five. Seven-year-old daughter, five-year-old son. And they're oh, You got one of each, huh? I got one of each, too. Yeah. I got 16 and 13. You're 16 and 13? Yeah. What's older, boy or girl? The boy's older. Oh, so you got the flip ski of me. I got yeah. the older girl. 
Oh, yeah? Yeah, I get the older girl. Is I grew up it? with older sister. Do you have older, older siblings? I have an older sister. Okay, so you grew up with an older sister. And tell me that you don't think this, agree with this or not. I wanted a girl first because I feel like it makes you f- realize and understand women a little bit more, but also treats you how to be a little bit more of a gentleman. Um, having an older sister yeah. definitely gives you a better perspective on how to be respectful to a woman and, and what it's like to be a woman. Right. For sure. I think you get it. It's by trial by fire, right? Yeah. You get to see all that going yeah. on. Yeah. And my, and my sister was, uh, she was, she was gay. She is gay. Mm-hmm. And so that was like a big thing to watch her go through that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when I was like, that's um, a journey, huh? Yeah. Yeah. To, to watch her go through that. And like, she went through some really bad shit. She was gay when it like, wasn't cool. Right. <laughs> And, uh, and so, wait, so how, how old was she? She's older than and me. Just feel free to tell me. Don't no, yeah, I'll tell you anything. Uh, she's, uh, she's five years older than me. Okay. So when, when she was going through that transition of, uh, of gaydom, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, just term, coming out of the closet. Yeah, coming out of the closet, that whole thing. Right. So when she's yeah. going through that, how old is she? Um, you know, kind of always. Was it later in life? Though? Always, but she didn't really come out to me until, uh, later in life, but we all kind of knew. Got it. Got it. You know, my mother used to, uh. And then once she came out, everybody was very supportive, of course. Yeah. And then my, well, my mother would go, uh, my mother would try to be supportive, and she'd go, uh, Barry, Ellen's on! She would tell her <laughs> that Ellen DeGeneres is on all the time. And then finally, Thanks, one day, my sister just yelled from downstairs. She's like, I'm, I'm just because I'm gay, it doesn't mean I like Ellen! <laughs> my sister she was just trying to connect with her. Yeah, That's my so sister cool. was ahead of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that, that was uh, just... Just seeing that was um, yeah something something to be, but yeah, I mean, like definitely uh, having having the older girl will be good for him. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if the girl is younger; she's going to be in charge anyway. Yeah, you know, like the the, the girls they they're so yeah. they're so they're so advanced. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, I remember I took my daughter to school in first grade, and she looked great. She mm-hmm. was like freaking yeah. s- smart, so sharp, and I we we all sat down and. The, the boys were there, and they were like, they were picking their nose. They, they couldn't talk. It's so they just developed so much slower. Banging their heads with books. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and then you look at us now, right. like, as grown adults. And, and we're just as dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You feel that way. Oh. Like, you still feel it. Yeah. Today's podcast is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Yes, Blue Chew. Who wants to be uh, killing it in the bedroom? Well, if you do, then you might want to check out Blue Chew and BlueChew.com. Guys, let me tell you something. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients in Viagra and Cialis, but it is in chewable form and it's at a fraction of the cost. And now they have Verdinafil mint flavored chewables, which has the same active ingredient as Levitra and Staxin. So you can say hard and fresh. They wrote that hard and fresh. That was the name of my uh, rap band when I was a kid. We only played a couple shows. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no more embarrassing visits to the doctor, waiting in line, going to the pharmacy. You, maybe you see someone there and you're like, oh, hey, Bill, what's up? It's like, oh, it's just, just n- nothing, nothing. Jeez, what you got there? Those aren't boner pills, are they? Uh, you don't want that to happen, right? Blue Chew, okay? It comes right to your door. And not only that, not only does it come right to your door, it comes in a discreet package. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve stronger and harder erections to combat all forms of ED. And in parentheses, it says erectile dysfunction. So if you don't know what ED means, that's what it means. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so there's no more awkward conversations with the doctor. There's no more waiting in line at the pharmacy. It comes right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Go to bluechew.com and speak with one of their licensed medical providers. And once approved, you will receive the package in days. And the best part, it's all done online. Blue Chew's Sidenafil and Tadalafil are chewable. And the best part, Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct so they're a heck of a lot cheaper than a pharmacy if this ad is speaking to you and you think you need a little extra help in the bedroom go to bluechew.com and check out the details and important safety information i highly recommend uh doing something about you know if you're having a problem in the bedroom if you you know having a problem with your love life uh do it for you do it for your partner and check out blue chew they're a wonderful company that's it guys that's my spiel go to bluechew.com and use our promo code good things you're going to pay just five dollars in shipping that's bluechew.com, promo code good things, all one word, and you're going to get your first month free. My special thanks to Blue Chew. Crazy how, how dumb guys yeah, are. Yeah, my, my daughter's going through this thing now, so she's seven. 
And she's going through this thing where she is like learning. Everybody wants to play with her. Yeah. She's very, she's very active. She's very, I don't know where she gets it from because <laughs> she's, but she's very like, you know, she's sporty and whatnot. And everybody wants to play with her. She's very popular and whatnot. And she, everyone's, and she starts having like, she's making kids feel bad because she's not playing with them. So now we're trying to teach her how to play with everybody. Yeah. And she's got a couple of favorites she likes to play with. And then those kids don't want to play with these other ones. So I'm like, all right, look, you're, you, you're what we call the center of the wheel here. I was like, all right, she's going to be, you got to shoot us. So we make her start playing with a new kid every day. And she'd be like, just play with somebody new. And then when she comes home from school, it's like, who'd you play with today? Yeah. And she starts doing that. So she's trying to, we're trying to teach her like friendship, which is a weird thing to have to teach kids, but you don't realize like they don't know anything. They don't know any better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. It's, it's a little weird. And my son is such a little, like, he's such a little homebody. Like, we were just at Disneyland this past couple of days, yeah. and he literally said he, to me, <laughs> he said, I want to go home. I want to go to the hotel and sit in the bed and chill. That's what he wanted to do. We're at <laughs> Disneyland. And that's what he said to me. I was like, it's so funny to see. Yeah. But, yeah, they're, they're, it's cool to see the little personalities and stuff. Did you get, uh, did you get the front of the line passes at Disney? Oh, yeah. I mean. So okay. good. It's, uh, I don't know. It's the best. It's crazy. You guys want to go again? Uh, let's do it again. It's like, I don't know how people, like, I would feel like I wasted so much time and money. I went to one of, like, we went to one of the rides broke down. It was like two and a half hours to yeah. wait online. And they were waiting online for like an hour. And then they're like, oh, I was like, I would, I would just punch myself in the face the whole day. I'm like, I spend all this money with the kids. Like, how do these kids survive? And I feel so bad. But it. It's fun. I like Disneyland versus World because I feel like you could cover it all like we did one day at each. And I grew up coming out here. My parents, grandparents were from Cali. So I, Disneyland is nostalgic to me instead yeah. of Disney World. And Disney yes. World is just like so huge. But uh, it, it was fun to bring the kids to. Is, is it hard for you to go do stand up and leave them? Yeah. It's the oh fucking worst. I put them on a plane this morning. I wanted to, oh my God. You like, were on a plane this morning? They were on a plane this morning. They were out here. So I, I came from Savannah. And I came here and I met them. Yeah. We just hung out here for a couple of days and now I'm doing my tour. So they went back home. And now I'm not going to see them again until Wednesday. So I'm like, ugh. They went home with their mom. And you I ever see like, Chris uh, Stefano? Like talk about it on Birds yeah, Podcast? Me and Chris are boys. We've talked about it, you know, because me and Chris, because I'm going through. You know, you know Chris. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I know Chris. And we're going th I'm going through. Uh, you That's know, some real shit. Break up with the, oh, my God. Watching him talk about, like, yeah, it's great. not seeing his daughter's birthday. So raw. Yeah. That was what was uh, for me for when I was doing YouTube for the last five years. I was here. And I literally could be, I could pick them up from school, I could take them to school, make my own schedule. And then when I would have to travel, it's just like, yeah. I just don't like it. Yeah. I don't like, do you like to travel? I don't like to go anywhere. I mean, that's the thing. When it was with Jokers, it was like I had two full-time jobs, right? I had this 14-hour days with the TV show, and then the weekends I would go travel and do it. I never saw them. I always tell the story about my, my daughter. Right before COVID happened, she's five years old. I come home, I hadn't seen them or whatever, and I come home from work, uh, from working on Jokers, and I said to her, I said, I said, hey, baby, and she goes, oh, my God, she comes up to Ronsby, gives a big hug, and she goes, Daddy, I love when, Daddy, I love when you come to visit, <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I'm doing something wrong, right, a punch to the fucking throat, tell me, right, I was like, wow, I am doing something wrong, right, so then COVID happens, whatever, and I'm saying, oh, whatever, and now the whole thing happens with, with my family, you know, and I have to realign my, my values and what I'm doing, and, you know, whatever, and, <laughs> Like three weeks ago, she asked me if I had a job. And I'm like, okay, overcorrected too much. <laughs> She's like, Daddy, do you even work? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so, but it's interesting, but it, it, it's hard. But thank God, like FaceTime and stuff. Could you imagine? Yeah. Like, I don't know how. FaceTime's good. Being able to see them and stuff. I don't know how I'd be able to exist without being able just to check in with them. Chrissy D them. would say FaceTime's not enough. But. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, for sure. I agree. I agree for that. But at least it's something. You it's, know? It's, it's, it is hard too. It's like there is something to, you know, that, they're learning self-reliance. They're learning to be, you know, you don't want to be a helicopter parent. You don't want to be doing everything for them. And yeah, and uh, yeah, it's, it's. But it a, makes your time with them feel a bit more important and you yeah. feel like you're more present. Yes. Like, for sure. Like my phone's not out of my pocket when I'm with them. Like it's just, that's it. I'm here with them and stuff. Like when they stay over at my house, like I'm just like, we're here. You know, yep. like, that's it. I'm not doing anything, which is kind of interesting to be like, oh, it's really cool to do this. And then I feel like a little bit of a guilt because you're like, oh, this is what you're supposed to be like. Feel like when you're a dad. And I'm like, what the fuck was I doing? Yeah. You know, so for that. But, I mean, you don't know, right? You just got to take it day by day. And yeah. I mean, was your dad uh, around? I, dad was around. He was the best. I lost him when I was young, though. I was 19 when my dad died. Oh, no. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so sorry. Yeah. yeah. You didn't do it. <laughs> Cancer did. Uh, so... <laughs> Okay, cool. I'm glad we established that. <laughs> good. You're I like, good. I got away with dad. it. <laughs> Guys, please don't put that out there. Like, I got away with it. <laughs> Joe thinks that I didn't kill his dad. Um, 
Yeah, but I, I was like, it always made me hyper present of like, you never know when the light's going to go out. So I'm, oh, I've always lived my life to be like, hey, it can end any time. Have as much fun as you can till the lights go out, you know? Yeah. Um, what did he die of? Uh, pancreatic cancer. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, the good one. Is your mom still around? Uh, no, she's dead too. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Again, you didn't do that. Uncle? Uh, 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 no, I got some uncles. Grandparents are gone. Yeah. Have but. your uncles come after you for money or anything? Do people ask you for a loan? I got a couple cousins rich? out. I got a couple cousins out there. But no, no. They're good. Are like you that. Italian? I'm Italian. Yeah. So I've always had money on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> you cook Italian? I do. You do? do? I'm a cook. Yeah. What's your specialty? I'm a cook. I love to go. Well, I don't eat meat. Okay. Um, so I used to do a good, but I do a good eggplant parm. I do a love good eggplant parm. parm. I do a lot, a lot of fun pasta dishes. I'm the king of, if there's something in the fridge, I'll look at it, visualize it, and make a meal out of it. Like, mm-hmm. that's what all my roommates always loved about me. I'm like, what do we got? All right, I can make this. Oh, like, like Iron Chef. Up. That's that, a little bit. A little bit. You know, like poor man chef. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I had a can of tuna and a roasted pepper. What can we do here, Joe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like to go. You cook? Uh, yeah, I cook, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's your nationality? I am... Uh, uh, quarter Irish, quarter Lebanese, quarter Italian, quarter Polish Jew. Wow. Yeah. So you really mixed it up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, my kids are Lebanese. My, uh, my, uh, oh, they are? Yeah, their mom's uh, 100% Lebanese, I'm 100% Italian. Yeah. So they're that. So they're, uh, yeah, they're like hummus parmesan, the kids. <laughs> you know, they're, a little bit, they're, they're good. They're, they, they, it's funny because my daughter won't eat like, she, they're vegetarian too because we don't eat meat in the house. The pescatarian, she likes fish. But she won't eat like, uh, she won't eat, like, you know, she's like, oh, I don't want to have this, like, taco, you know, whatever. But then she's like, she'll have, like, uh, she'll have, like, all the, uh, you know, all the Lebanese food. Like, what's the uh, tam- tamale, not tamale, tam- the chopped mint and parsley. Yeah. Uh, that, like, she has a tabbouleh. She's, she loves oh, tabbouleh, oh, love but she won't have a taco. But she, I'm like, what seven-year-old kid loves tabbouleh and so won't have, like, what a taco? Eat what they won't eat. I know, it's nuts. And yeah, my 16-year-old, he still only, uh, he just only eats pasta. That's really? It. Yeah. It's insane. Here, we have a little Google board here. Let's do this. This will be fun. I oh. should have did this in the beginning. Oh, okay. <laughs> this will be good for TikTok, hopefully. Although, they never end up on TikTok. Okay, what Joe do they? Gatto? This is Google's most searched questions for Joe Gatto. Let's go. Fill them off there, Joe. Okay. Let's see. Let's see so, what. first one, which, am I supposed to guess what they are? Or? No, no, just pull them off and answer. Okay, so I have to answer them. Got it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. we got to find a better way for this. Okay, what's Joe Gatto doing now? <laughs> A podcast. <laughs> that one was easy. Yeah, that's easy. Know, easy. Okay. He's here with Jason Nash. Okay, here we go. What does Joe Gatto do for a living? That's kind of cool. That's a cool that's one. It's a good question. Well, why, why would someone ask, ask that? that? Isn't it clear you're a comedian? <laughs> I mean, you Google me. The it's guy's like, a master prankster yeah, a uh, television star. I, I'm an entertainer, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I, I, what, I make people laugh for a living. I live to make people laugh. That's one of my sayings. Maybe they think that since you're not on the show anymore, what are you doing now? I'm probably so, I'm working at Nordstrom's. <laughs> I've got to go pick up a shift here. Are we done? i gotta, I got to get over the growth. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. <laughs> 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 over the growth. We should go shopping. I would. <laughs> What are Joe Gatto's dogs' names? Oh, how much time do oh, we oh, have? Oh, you're like really into dogs. You wrote a yeah. book about your dogs, right? Yeah, the dog father. I got 24 dogs in What's New York. What's the book about? It's about, it's basically, uh, it was a project I did during COVID. I'm, I'm big into amateur photography too, so I took some pictures. You're everywhere. Shared about, yeah, I shared about, uh, I wanted to make a book, so I did a book on Amazon called The Dog Father, my, my love of dogs, desserts, and growing up Italian. Yeah. And it tells a story about my dogs and whatnot, but I got, yeah, I, have to, I do a lot of rescue. I have the Gatto pups. Who's your favorite dog you had in your life? Biscotti. She's my girl. She's my first rescue. Her and Spumoni, they're tied. Yeah. This, uh, they're all named there for Italian de- pastas and desserts because that's on brand for me. Like, they're all the, the pasta dishes. And then there's penny vodka. Yeah. I, it wouldn't make sense <laughs> if they were named after workout routines. Yeah. Push-ups, sit-ups, <laughs> treadmill, not for me. Yeah, I got, you know, my favorite first one was cannoli. Cannoli. Yeah, so I had cannoli, biscotti, Spumoni, Napoleon, and Tartufo, <laughs> tiramisu, fed, the brother and sister fettuccine, Alfredo. I got them all. Are they all little dogs? Uh, mostly, yeah. yeah. I got a couple big ones, but most of them are small. Yeah. That's cool. Those are my dogs. You don't have enough time for all of them. Let's see this next thing here. What's, what is Joe Gatto Traffic Cam Live? That was my first foray into uh, social media, really. I did a thing where I used to put on, on Periscope. Do you remember Periscope? Yeah. It was Twitter's live yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I used to turn it on while I was driving, and I would talk, answer questions, sing and dance while I was sitting in traffic. And, <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. That's Traffic Cam Live. That was it. So What happened to Periscope? Did they end one, it? It's gone. It's gone. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Who is replacing Joe Gatto? No one. No one can replace Joe Gatto. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Who is Joe Gatto's best friend? Oh. oh, that's tough. I will say my best friend in life is probably Jason Joseph. He was my first friend I ever made. 
Yeah. Yeah. He was. He, he was. I was two. He was one. He moved next door to me. Do you think and it's important to maintain friendships from your childhood? I do. I, I'm not friends with anybody from my childhood. Well, some of them are worth shit, and that's not on you. It's their fault. They were dumb. They were dumb friendships. I think you, friendships are like seasons. They come and go. But I think there are a couple that you should hold on to. What happens on Facebook with you? Do a lot of people reach out and like I don't talk? Even, I don't even look at it. You don't look at it. Yeah, I don't look at it. it. Someone really. said to me the other day, they go, how come you're not on Facebook? You didn't see my Facebook message? No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. yeah. I, yeah. I go, what? I, I mean, messaging for me is pretty ruined because anybody just, you know, everybody is like, everybody oh, is, yeah, you know, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. But I don't really use Facebook Can for you that. say hi to my friend? Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. How is Joe Gatto doing? <laughs> Now? What kind of question? Who would type I that in there? I get that a lot. It's like, hey, Joe, how's he doing? It's like, Joe, how are you? Joe, I know you're going through some stuff. How are you? I'm like, good, Mabel from Iowa. I'm good. Thank <laughs> you, you know, for that, asking. That's what people do to make themselves feel better. They go, oh, this person's going through something. Let me checking. make it about yeah. them. I would say I'm doing okay. Yeah, I'm just doing okay. I'm just too. doing okay. I'm doing okay. Yeah. Day Is, by day. Isn't that something, too, when you're, when you're um, in the public eye and people just assume... That you're fucking so happy, yeah, and that you're rich, yeah. and that like everything. I mean, we're barely hanging on by a thread here, and you know, and it's like, yeah, it it really is something. I I think people people just don't understand that if you have some kind of they assume if you have some kind of visibility that you're happy and fulfilled and yeah. Well, I got have this weird thing because I don't play a character on TV, right? I'm me. So people really feel like they know me, right? Yeah, they yeah, they yeah, know yeah, me. Yeah, oh, look, yeah, there's yeah, a fat yeah, asshole. Yeah, like, yeah, I get that yeah, all the yeah. time. You know, like, it's like, oh, you're not as fat as you look on TV. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. You know, I'm not Chandler. You know, I'm yeah. Joe. You know what I mean? So it's like, you get that of it. And now that... And, and, and you're more approachable than Chandler. 100%. You wouldn't walk up to Matthew Perry, but I would walk up to you. Yeah, I get approached all the time. And it's part of it. I love it. I love my fans. I tried to I walk up to you guys at Spider-Man once. Did you? I have a picture with you guys and my son. Really? Yeah. And I and and it wasn't you, but it was maybe one of the other guys. And I and I and I think, I think I was came on way too strong. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> you seem very. You seem like you wouldn't have done that. No, no, no. <laughs> you should see me. I'm terrible with celebrities. I freak out. I, I do too. Because I I didn't get famous until I was 34, 36 years old. Right. You're already the person you are. Like I'm a fan of fans. Like I'm a yeah, fan. Yeah, me of, too. I was like I freaked this sh- out all the time. I did some terrible things when I was younger. When I'm on the red carpet, I'll tell you what I do here <laughs> on the red carpet. I go to I go to the movie premieres to hang on the red carpet. I don't ever go into the theater. I don't even go watch a movie really. I just stand out in the corner to see as the people come down and I'll pop out. And like, hey, oh, 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 but then I came out the same time. I'm the king of that shit. And like, you did it with Clooney. Like, I do, dude. I, I did to Clooney. Yeah. I pull the Clooney all the time on carpets. That's what I do all the time. Yeah. I weasel my way into so many. <laughs> yeah, one time I was at a movie at the Grove a long time ago, and I wrote a script, and I, I'm so embarrassed. I walked up to Jason Alexander, and I asked him if I could send him the script. No. Yeah, it was really. Oh, well, hey, you're a hustler. Yeah. That's what we love about you. Yeah, yeah. It did. And do you know what he said? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I love that. I love that for him. <laughs> Sorry, Jason Alexander. The best that was my time. bad. You did the right thing. You, did. you tried. Today's podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. What a wonderful company. Thank you so much for sponsoring here, BetterHelp. I love BetterHelp, guys. Uh, you know, life, it does not come with a manual. Sometimes we need a little help. We need someone to talk to. And I highly recommend going to see a therapist. For me, I always feel like uh, I'm, I'm going 100 miles a minute. And I have a lot of anxiety about my life, about my kids, about my work. And uh, it, it really does help to talk to someone. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've gone to see a therapist and they've just with a very, very simple fix, uh, just having somebody to talk to, just having someone to tell you that, hey, it's all going to be okay. And in an instant, I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, I'm, I am going to be okay. And that's what I love about BetterHelp. As we know, navigating life can be so difficult. Uh, Maybe you have a relationship trouble. Maybe you have issues with your family, a career change. Maybe you're becoming a new parent. These are all things that can give us a lot of anxiety and give us a lot of problems. My mother used to call them traffic jams when I was a kid. She'd be like, oh, you know, you better talk to somebody. You're going to have traffic jams. Well, let me tell you something. Better help is fantastic because it's going to get rid of the traffic jams and you're not going to be in any traffic jams because you don't even have to get in your car. You can do it in your own home. See what I did there? Pretty good. So no traffic jams. They should just change it. They should change. They should change it. Better help. No traffic jams because 
you're going to do it in your pajamas. But seriously, these therapists are trained. They're wonderful. They know how to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and also give you the coping skills so you can deal with these emotions and just live a better life and just be happy. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched over 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash all good things. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash all good things. How did Joe got to lose weight? I'll let you know. I didn't. <laughs> Massive depression. <laughs> Did you lose weight? Uh, Were you bigger? I, well, here's the thing. I was, at my biggest, I was 225. And yeah. then the show was in high definition. And I was like, I got to do something about that. I almost died, literally, when we were filming one of the... Why? We did, they made us do this thing for the Nitro Circus, where we had to do, like, every 100th episode. Yeah, I used to see you guys so advertise for the Nitro Circus. Right, we did this 200th circus. episode, where they, we did this whole thing with the Nitro Circus. So I went first, because the, everybody, you know, I had to set the tone. So I go first. My, my mini bike breaks down, so I'm like, I'll just run it. So I run as fast as I can. As it's live TV, and I just run it, and I literally almost have a heart attack. And they had to take me underneath, and during it, I'm trying to recuperate during the whole thing. I'm literally with doctors. They had me on oxygen. I'm underneath the thing, and I was like, I got to do something here. So then I just stopped, and I got a flu after that, and I lost like six pounds, and I just grabbed the, I grabbed onto the friggin', you know, the, the tailwind, and I just was like, I'll lose weight here. Right. So I lost 10 pounds through the flu, and I just lost another 16. And is that why you're, and um, that's it. you're I, vegetarian? I, I, yeah, well, no, I got into that. I tried to undo some of the damage I've done being a fat Italian my whole life. Yeah. And, yeah, I just kind of just was like... I, I weigh in around 195-ish now, and that's where I hang that's out. That's good. But there's okay. a lot of footage of me being on TV at like 225. So Really? Yeah. Oh, you can't tell. How old is Joe Gatto from Impractical Jokers? I'm 46. <laughs> I'm no longer, when I was from Impractical Jokers, I was only 45. So I guess that ends there. <laughs> <laughs> You're younger than me. How much does Joe Gatto make per episode? Oh, good question. <laughs> And Joe's going to tell us. Per episode, if you broke it down, I made a little bit over minimum wage. It was great. <laughs> it's basic cable, guys. <laughs> basic cable. So you made your money outside of the show. The touring was nice. The, the touring. touring. Was, the touring was good. Yeah, we ended up, you know, when you go that many seasons, you end up being able to renegotiate enough, you know. But uh -huh. in the beginning, like, it was ridiculous. We were making, like, there was people who were making, there was more people on the show for the first three seasons making more than us than there weren't. Okay, let's play a game. You don't have to tell me how much you made on a night of touring, but tell me how many seats you would play. How many seats? And are I'll tell them how much you made. Oh, you mean how many people were in the theater? Yeah. Oh, when we were doing like the Joker's tour, it's most. I mean, we played Madison Square Garden, right? We were playing sixteen thousand people. You played the Garden. Yeah, I played the. Garden. Oh, I can't do that, man. Yeah, we played the O2. Yeah, we played. We played arenas. You we did made it to arena level. Yeah. What's that like? Fun, fun. I tell you. What so, kind of show was it? Was it a multimedia mix? So it was a mix of stories together, but we yep. also did a lot of video stuff too, where we'd throw and do stuff. It was it was a nice. It was a fun format. Fun format. Doesn't it cost like $400,000 to rent the garden? It's insane. We made the least money at the garden. They made more money off us than we did. Yeah, I mean, the garden's like, when we play, we, the most money you make is normally like a, a good-sized theater where you're able to do two shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the second show is where you really make your money. You know, if you're able to hit a like second 3, show. 3000 more than that? Yeah. Right around there? Yeah. Oh, that's fucking right. cool. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. Should we do this? Do we have this? Uh, okay. All right, here we go. This is Never Have I Ever with Joe Gatto. Here we go. <laughs> Never have ever fallen asleep in public. Never have fallen asleep? Well, for, come on. Never, <laughs> Never ever returned something after I wore it. Would you, would you get Return. to what, what happens if someone returns something at Nordstrom? Nordstrom, you're like, you, they don't even need receipts. Really? You just walk in. I saw people pick something up, walk over to me, and be like, I just bought this, I don't want it anymore. And we couldn't prove that they couldn't do it. We had to give them their money back. Really? It's insanity over there. It's mayhem. It's mayhem. Yeah, it's mayhem. But I've done it too. I wore a jacket once. Have you ever gotten something taken back where it was like stained and you're like, I can't yeah. take this? I said, this is, this is gross. What are you doing to us? But we had to take it back. And it came out of my pocket. Oh, you pocket. take it. You have to. Um, never have ever peed my pants or bed as an adult. As an adult? <laughs> yeah. As an adult, <laughs> for sure. For sure. I pee, yeah, I peed I, I pee the bed till I was 14 years old. So I was in young adulthood, yeah, when oh, I did geez. it. But then I had uh, that same flu we just talked about. Yeah. I woke up and it was... It was a crime scene, what I woke up into. I had sweat everywhere, and I was like, oh, I sweat a lot. I sweat a lot down here. Oh, no, I peed myself all over. That's how out cold I was. Yeah. 
Never have I ever gotten into a physical fight. Once and I lost. What happened? How old I got my nose broke. 12 years old, I got beat up by the town ruffian. Really? Broke my nose. Yeah. There's a lot of fights in your neighborhood? No. I avoided most of them <laughs> by hiding. <laughs> I talk a good game. I talk a good game. I'm able to talk my way out of it. Talk your way out of it. Yeah, what, for sure. what, what would you say? What's good advice for being bullied at school? You know, here's what I, here's what I, I once talked to a guy out and hit me. I was like, you don't want to hit me. He says, this is how the conversation started. He said, I'm going to punch you in the face. I said, you don't want to hit me. And he goes, why don't I want to hit you? I said, you don't want to hit me. I said, first of all, what's going to come of it? I said, you're going to win. I said, then what's going to happen? You're going to get in trouble. I literally talked a kid out of the point of me. He's like, he's like, you're right. And I was like, yeah, yeah I know. And, and you know I'm right. Like, I made it like his idea not to punch me. It was one of the best, one of the best performances of my life. Well, <laughs> never have ever been fired from a job. I'll say no. Because I would never fire you. You're like a great. I never got fired. Yeah, you're a good employee. Yeah, I never got fired. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can please. I use you as a reference? Yeah, please. Great, thank you. <laughs> never have ever been someone's alibi. Someone's alibi? Mm-hmm. Like your friend is saying, Gotcha. Hey, hey uh, I'm gonna I'm sleeping at Darren's house. No, I will I don't think I don't think I ever had to do that. Yeah. I don't think I I've had to do that because people pretty know I shoot pretty straight, so I don't think I've ever I would I would though. It's this. <laughs> it's, it's this. Because I haven't, but I would. If you need something, you let me know. All fair. You ever see the mob growing up in Staten Island? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, my mom. Forget it. <laughs> my mom my mom dated many half a gangster after my father passed. Joe Scungeal. Joey Scunch, we called him. So your father passes and then your mom starts dating again. Oh, that's odd. That's awkward. You hear through the vents. She was active. <laughs> I used to live in a basement. <laughs> I used to live in a basement. <laughs> She was active. You were living in the basement. I was living in the basement. Working on your improv. Working on my improv. And my, and my mom was closing scenes up, yes anding in her bedroom. <laughs> and I just came through the vents. It's the worst. <laughs> I'm glad she had fun. Yeah. You want your mom to hook yeah, for up. For sure. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. Wanna, you don't wanna. Yeah, I'm going through that now with my girlfriend. I'm like, uh, I thought you were going to say with your mom. I was like, God bless. She's going to be up there in it. My friend married my mom. Your friend married your yeah, mom? Yeah, David Dobrik for a YouTube video married her. Officially. Oh, my. It's a really God. good bit. That's a great bit. Yeah. You guys have so many bits. Sal married, uh, Mar married Sal's sister. He did? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what did it bit. So, uh, Sal was tied and couldn't, he, he was strapped to, to like a young Frankenstein setup with his mouth gagged. And we said, does anybody here object? And he couldn't object. Oh, that's <laughs> fucking great. Genius. Yeah, it was a good one. Do you guys have a lot of writers for the show? Uh, towards the end, yeah. Towards yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, beginning, it was, well, everything always came through us. But we got a writer's room in like season four, or five, where we got a room of like two. Dude, that's like incredible. It's just the four of you are coming up with all the ideas. Yeah, yeah, we came through a lot, and we always signed off on all of them. Yeah. And there's so many bits a show. It started with like five or six bits. If you look at you, would, it's insanity if you do the numbers. Because in the first season, we did we ended up doing like two or three bits a show right. towards the end because we let the comedy breathe. But yeah. in the beginning, it was more like a clippy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So there was like five or six bits per show. With jokes in each bit. Yeah. Like if you do the math, we'd have to, we had to tell a million jokes. A I, million jokes. I don't think people understand how hard it is to fill 22 minutes. Sure. Yeah. yeah it's f fucking impossible. Yes. Both on the television and in the bedroom. <laughs> Unless you're my mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Never have ever lied to law enforcement. Lie inf law enforcement? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. For what? Speeding. Have you, do you know how fast you were going? No. <laughs> you ever gotten out of a speeding ticket? Doing Plenty. That? Being you? No. No. No, not being me. I got, I, got, I got one being me, and that was annoying. I said to the guy, I took my glasses off and everything. I was like, hey, it was in New York City. I'm like, you kidding me? You don't know who I am? He didn't know you. He didn't know me. Didn't know. My mom got me out of one once. Yeah? Because I got a speeding ticket. <laughs> I, was, I got this ticket. I was driving down. She was in the big gambler. She was in Atlantic City, and she would won. Yeah. Right. So she's the, the bells are ringing, and you know, I she called. She's like, Joey, I just won ten thousand dollars. Come down, meet me down. So I come down. She used to rock out at the Hilton. I you drive to, down to Atlantic City because your Atlantic mom City. hit ten. My grand. mom hit ten grand. I have her car because she's with her boyfriend Joe Scunch. I have her car, which is a nice little two seater SLK. Yeah. Right, in Mercedes. Right, little yeah. drop top. I'm flying. I'm going like ninety. Right. Whoop whoop. I get pulled over. Right. Early in the day, I was like, my, I was hanging out with my boys down at the Jersey Shore. Yeah. I didn't have my sh I didn't have any clothes with me. I only had my like, flip flops. She's like, come down. I was like, all right, I'll stop at Macy's. I go to Macy's, I get an outfit to use my Macy's credit card. I don't have my credit card. I have to show him my license, okay? Yeah. Fast forward, I get pulled over, whatever. I go, he's like, license registration. I take out my wallet. It's on the thing at Macy's. I left my wallet at Macy's. I don't have an ID on me. So I said to him, I said, oh, officer, I apologize. I don't have my ID on me. I'm going 90 miles an hour in this Mercedes, one-year-old Mercedes, yeah. brand new, right? That's yeah. registered to Geraldine Gatto. He's like, what's your name? I'm like, Joe Gatto. He's like, give me your ID. I don't have anything with my name on it. I can't prove I am who I am. 
Wow. He goes to me, okay, I got to take you in. I go, what? I said, you can't take me in. My mother will kill me. I said, I'm going to see my mom in Atlantic City. He goes, what are you talking about? I got to take you in. He said, how do I know you are who you are? I said, I am. He goes, all right. I said, look up the license plate. I said, and he goes, he goes to look up the license plate. Let the, the link between New Jersey and New York is down. He can't, <laughs> he can't look it up. So now he's like, I got to take you in. He's like, it's down. There's no way for me to prove this. I'm like, I got it. That's what I said. I got, I got it. I give him my cell phone. I said, call mom. She'll answer. Her name is Geraldine Gatto, and she'll tell you that I have my car. The cop thinks this is an idea. He goes, okay. He calls my mother, who's in Atlantic City. Hello? Hey, poopy baby, what are you doing? He's like, this is Sergeant whatever his name was. He's like, from the Jersey, gone state police. She goes, my mom cuts off the cop, goes, put my son on the phone. (laughs) The cop goes, ma'am, I'm just trying to tell you. She goes, put my son on the phone. The officer is sweating. He doesn't know what to do. He goes, your mom wants to talk to you. He Uh gives me the phone and he drives away. No way. I swear to God. Unbelievable, right? Oh, damn. That's my mom. That's fucking awesome. She was no fucking joke, Jerry Gatto. Damn. Unbelievable. (laughs) It's <laughs> a really good story This is Rapid Fire with Joe Gatto Here we go Get that out for you In case you guys have to switch it around Favorite, favorite episode of Impractical Jokers Favorite episode I, Episodes are hard But I will say One of my favorite things I ever did on Impractical Jokers Was when I broke tables Using my body They okay. made me find breakaway tables uh-huh. And I had to jump on tables To break <laughs> To find a breakaway I did a lot But it was very funny I used my body as a weapon That or the genie When I was the genie They made, they made me dress up as a genie And I had to wreck the set of a community play. They hoisted me up and they used my body as a wrecking ball. I Miley Cyrus that shit and I was just knocking everything over and I went through glass and stuff. That was really fun. Yeah. Did you get hurt? No, that one I didn't get hurt. Well, I did a little bit because they dropped me and I caught my neck in a rolled up rug. <laughs> I was like, oh, besides that, but it wasn't bad. Someone has a theory that Chevy Chase is so cantankerous because he got hurt so bad doing SNL. Maybe. Yeah. I might, yeah. Someone has that theory. I don't yeah. know who said that. Somebody yeah, famous said that. <laughs> it is tough though. Like I, I've gotten hurt quite a bit. I've been tased. I never got tased. I've I been buried alive. I've been buried with my uh, dirt up to my neck. And, uh, and it wasn't bad. Why? Uh, because the, the gag was they, they pull up a, a thing and I'm, I'm there for like lunch, ah, you know. Got it. But uh, the weight of the soil yes. after an hour and a half I almost died once. They did a thing where they wanted me to escape from, uh, I played a magician, and they legitimately cuffed me and put me in a, in a, in a uh, full, like, straight jacket, and they put yeah. me in a, basically a, a, a two, uh, phone yeah. booth that was filled up, being filled up with water, and they put me at the Borgata in Atlantic City, and they said, put on this magic show, You're, this is going to be a big bit, and they knew I wouldn't be able to escape, so I would just stand there for an idiot, like an idiot trying to escape, right. and they never put somebody on turning the water off. So the water's getting filled in and we're playing, whatever, and the water's getting higher and higher. And I'm like, did somebody? And in my mind, I'm like, as a producer, I'm like, did we not tell somebody to turn the water off? <laughs> so I just start going, water, water. <laughs> <laughs> they come out of the show. And, like, and the, the Will Faxon, who was our, our art director, God bless him, comes running over and he literally like yanks the thing as the water's like to hear on me. <laughs> it didn't make the show. And no, the, not the water part, but the whole thing did. And it was fine. And I did. stood there for 45 minutes as the crowd just sat there and tried to watch me. I was banging my body around. Yeah. There's no show. Yeah, I can't yeah. escape. I don't know how. No. To. And people were just watching me be an idiot for 45 minutes. Yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla, 100%. 100% Beach of the time. Vanilla? 100%. Don't you even see, stall You seem me. like a chocolate guy. I know, and that's why I'm full of surprises, and that's what the best part of me is. Don't judge a book. Don't judge a fat by its cover, is what I'm saying. Are you dating? Not now, right now. Yeah. You interested? <laughs> I mean, it's the first time we met. You want to take me to Katana? I'll think about it. I tell you, before I met my girlfriend, I was thinking of dating a guy yeah yeah it was it was that it was <laughs> that great it was a dark time for me. yeah i just it would open up a whole oh, thing Forget segment it. you know you yeah. go so long being alone yeah. i've been divorced 10 years 10 eight, years eight years yeah eight eight nine years i've been divorced yeah and you go so long and you're like huh, maybe i'll check in with you in seven years and let you know what i'm thinking <laughs> uh you've kept it together though i've kept it together this is nice you present yourself well I went through a big transformation. Did you? I've been trying to lose weight. Right, you did, didn't you? Like, you were yeah. a thing where you're a big fatty, and now all of a sudden you're all ripped and shit, right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, 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 See, yeah. Good yeah, for yeah. you, though. Yeah, I'm trying. I, I, my friends are, uh, my friend, he has a fitness company. Got it. So they all started to get in shape, and uh, they were like, they're in their 20s, they're like late 20s, 
And there was a part of me that was like, I, I, I wanted to see if I could do it too. You know what okay, I mean? To like gotcha. keep up with them because I'm so much older than them. Yeah. There's all the guys I do YouTube with. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, so now I've done it and I got the diet in check and, and then I'm running a half marathon on Sunday. Good luck to you. I hope you make it. My question for you, why, why do you run with a pack of young 20s? Like now, isn't, is that odd? Because is that odd to you? Do you have friends your age? Uh, yes. Okay. I do. So then... It's, it's a great question. Yeah. I'm glad you asked it. Okay, go ahead. Julie Bowen asked the same thing. That was all she wanted to know. Okay. It became... Uh, it's so hard. Like, I was married, yep. and I had, like... I had friends that were my age, and my friends from college and stuff like that. And then I got divorced. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, I, f I found a group of guys that all did YouTube. So life sort of became... Um, filming. Yes. With them. Yes. And uh, and that buds friendships because yeah. you spent so much time together. Yeah. And then unlike unlike Impractical Jokers, where you have a set and you probably guys you guys work you know eight to fucking eight or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, it it became like we can film anytime. Yeah. We can film at three in the morning because right, right, right. there's no crew there or whatever. And so that just became my life, and I really liked it. I really liked uh, making content, and I loved the guys. I just love, I just love So you them. associated the feel and the fun of the content got kind of put with these guys too. So it's all a good feeling all wrapped together in a time when you're going through some tough shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it just became more exciting than, um, it, I just enjoyed hanging out with them That's more, great. more than yeah. I did people my age. Yeah. The people my age were like, they would just talk about like wine. Yeah. <laughs> The gazebo. Yeah, well, that they the built. fuck about the gazebo you built. I don't give a no, fuck. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Alex. Uh, yeah. I don't give a shit about your gazebo. Surgery. Oh. Sickness. Oh, my knee hurts. Yeah. I don't know, you know, believe what happened the other day. Oh, yeah. I found I found a gazebo on sale. And yeah. I bought it for the backyard. Oh. Yeah, and so it... Um, they build ponds. Now, now if I did... <laughs> Right? Who gives a shit about your koi pond, you idiot? I Nobody does, right? I don't give a fuck about your koi pond. I'm with you. I'm not. I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm yeah, wondering. yeah. And, and 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 I and if I didn't really love them, uh, and love hanging out with them, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't just for, sure. for the content. No. Um, in fact, like all of us do podcasts now, we don't even film that much anymore. Um, but when we do, it's. Uh, we all have our roles and we all have our, just like, it, I, I liken it to what you have 100%, yeah. with, with, with your there. show. Yeah. You know, we have, we have the guy that's overweight. I'm the old guy. We have the guy that's really good looking. Yeah. Um, that, that would be me. That's, I, see, I see what you're saying. You said it without saying it, but I saw it. Who is the best looking in, out of the Impractical Jokers? Uh, probably it's a four-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you have any friends that are in their 20s? I, I don't, I wouldn't say, yeah, I probably do. I probably have a couple. Here's the thing too. I'm a, I've always bridged the gap going toward younger because I'm the youngest of 15 grandkids. Yeah. And then there's 22 great grandkids oh, and I was the bridge. So I always was yeah. like the older brothery kind of deal kind of thing. And I think because of my show, I've always skewed to younger people. So I have a lot of professional friends that are younger. I don't think people that I run with on the regular are younger. Yeah. I don't really have many friends. I don't believe that, Joe. Oh, I'm very lonely. Can we I'm put saying. in some sad music? Could this you? The can I Walters meet your moment. friends? Can I meet your friends and maybe they'll like me too? <laughs> they'll love you. You already have an old guy though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, they'll fucking kick me out you for you in a old, second. You already have an old, fat, and good-looking guy. Where do I fit? Yeah. Where do I fit? I don't fit in it. But aren't we all kind of just like... Old, fat, and good-looking? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, we, are we all just kind of young at heart like from what we do? For sure. Like when I go when I go to a dinner party with my ex wife or whatever, or with do like a, a Yom Kippur thing or whatever, yeah. like I don't sit and talk to the adults. I no. I, I yeah. talk to the kids. Yeah, for sure. You know, like they're way more interesting. I'll, and you know, you tease them or you act stupid. You'd be like, teach mm -hmm. me slang or whatever. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That slaps. Yeah, I learned that one the other night. Oh, uh, the slaps is great. <laughs> I love when stuff slaps. It's one of my favorite things. I built a koi pond. It's fucking slaps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is lit. <laughs> you, you should come out, come hang out. They would love it. I, dude, everybody's very excited you're coming today. Oh, really? Yeah. And nobody showed up. I wouldn't let them come. <laughs> <laughs> He's mine. He's super possessive. Look at you. Oh, that's sweet. Well, give my love to everybody. I like the career you run with. So, thank you. Has anyone ever gotten really mad at a prank? 
Yeah, we have one. We have one where Murray almost got punched by this big black guy because he was shopping, and we didn't realize this, but he was on the phone with his. He was on the phone, and he was getting f- almost fired, like he was fighting for his job. And we don't know that, right? So Murray's walking around. This is big. He's this huge dude, and he, Murray's walking around. And Murray picks up a bra and tries to size him for a bra as he's walking on the way. He's like, I just, "You're the size of my my wife. I just want to see if the guy." And the guy like goes after him. Like so much other, like security had to get involved. That was the only time really. Make the but show. for the most part, yeah, it did. It did. But we cut it around to make it seem a little yeah. nicer. But for the most part, we're the butt of our own joke, so we're doing something wrong if that happens. Like yeah, we're not yeah. sure out there to get me people mad. Yeah, that's the cool thing yeah. about the show. We're trying with the butt. It's on right. you guys. We've gotten mad at each other, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> last question all right here we go do you miss nordstrom <laughs> i do miss nordstrom like whoa it's my favorite place to shop nordstrom rack is my favorite here's a hack for everybody at home come in and listen to your uncle joe go to nordstrom rack because they have the prices and all they have all the did you bring it in i asked you to bring it in bring it in thank you what kind of <laughs> listen hey listen we're not we're not we're not 12 cameras here okay okay listen, okay? Listen, listen, is, this, is this my camera is this my close-up Okay, I'm going to get dramatic with it. Give it a second. Hold on, I want some music here. I know I'm giving you some editing, but... <laughs> Guys, if you're not shopping at Nordstrom Rack, you're making a mistake. <laughs> There you go. There we have it, guys. It. Wise words from Joe Gatto. <laughs> this from, has been phenomenal. Yeah, Thank dude, you so you're much. awesome. Thank you so much. If you want to, like... Honestly, if you ever want to... I, I don't say this to any guests. Yeah. But if you want to hang out... Dude, I would love to hang. <laughs> I would love to hang. I would love it. But you're busy. You can't hang. I'm too old for you. <laughs> Guys, go check out Joe Gatto's podcast. Yes, uh, Two on Cool his, Moms. Two it's Cool Moms on, on his channel. Yep. And go see him live. He's performing all over the country. Anything yes. else you want to promote? JoeGattoOfficial.com. That's my website. They come see me live. I'm all over the place. And uh, that's it, really. Dude, thank you so much for doing this. It this means so much to me. No, you kidding me? It really thank does. You, I really you're appreciate incredible. it. You're incredible. So, this went so much better than I thought it was going <laughs> to.